As a parent, I know there are some books my kids aren't quite ready for. I had my son wait until he was 11 to read The Hunger Games, for example, even though he wanted to read it when he was nine and he saw the cool cover. There's no rush, I told him, as he devoured the Percy Jackson series and listened to the complete Penderwicks on audiobook. It'll still be there in a couple years. But would that mean I don't want The Hunger Games on the shelf at the library? Of course not. Would I want to make the decision about book readiness for all other people? Of course not. Our students need stories they can find themselves inside. They need wide-ranging, diverse titles where they feel seen and understood and where they can grow to understand other people. As Banned Books Week kicks off, I know not every teacher in America is in a position to showcase it. In some places, it's simply too dangerous for an educator to display banned and challenged books and talk about intellectual freedom with students. But for those of us lucky to be in a position to share about this, today I want to share some options. Choose the ones that are right for your classroom and community. As usual, it's not about telling our students what to think. It's reminding them that the issue of intellectual freedom and freedom to read, it's an important thing to think about. Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and one-pagers, project-based learning, and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini maker space to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure, and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line. Creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator. And while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. Okay, before we jump in, I just want to say what I often say, and that is that there are a lot of free resources and links in the blog post that's associated with this podcast. So I'm going to be mentioning them, and I just want to encourage you to go to the show notes at nowsparkcreativity.com so you can find all those links. So let's start with the facts. The American Library Association has compiled a lot of great data about censorship and challenges taking place to books around the country. In 2022, there were 1,269 attempts to ban or censor library books or resources. This is the highest number in the last 20 years. The ALA has a ton of really helpful information, which I am linking, <laughs> um, and it, it really lays out like what are the most challenged books, why have they been challenged, what states are they being challenged in, how is it impacting libraries, how is it impacting schools. So this is one place to start. Um, the ALA website has a great infographic you can print out that shows students what the top most challenged books are and also shows um, like a little bit more information about the types of challenges and where they have taken place. So once you have a little bit of background in what's going on, um, you can start to think about how you want to share this with students. There are a lot of ways. One of the easiest ways to raise student awareness of book censorship is to put up a display for this Banned Books Week that's starting right now. Um, One of the easiest ways to put up a display is to add flames to a shelf that has banned books on it. I have seen this done in a lot of places. I didn't invent it, Um, but it's just a really lovely, simple way to both reference Fahrenheit 451, a, a fantastic book about this very theme, and also just sort of grab students' interest. So if you put up a poster in red and orange that says read banned books and you put some banned books out like The Bluest Eye, Speak, Kite Runner, New Kid, The Hate You Give, Feed, there are so many. You can just look up a list of banned books or look in the blog post for ideas. 
Um, and then cut out red and orange flames out of red and orange construction paper. Get your get your children at home to help you if you have kids or early finishers in class to help you. You can cut out little flames and put them in the book like as a bookmark or you can put them all over the shelf with bigger flames so that the books are sort of hidden behind the flames. This is an easy way just to grab students' attention, get them thinking about the idea of book banning. Another super simple display option is to create one with caution tape. So a lot of times around Halloween, different stores are selling caution tape for people making haunted houses, or you can just print out the word caution on yellow photocopier paper and then, you know, cut it to look like caution tape. But just put your banned books across a shelf and then cover them with caution tape. Uh, and again, it's just so simple. It takes a couple of minutes, but it gets students thinking like, what do you mean caution? <laughs> Why did you put up these caution tape strips? And then you can say, well, it's banned books week. Like, um, these are all books that have been challenged throughout history for X, Y, Z reason. And you start a conversation that way. Around these kinds of simple displays or more complex, if that's what you want, you could put up some free posters that are available online. I've just made a free set of posters that shows different characters holding up signs explaining why their books were challenged. I saw this idea on the ALA Pinterest page and I loved it so much, so I adapted my own version. I have posters for The Hate You Give, Speak, The Wizard of Oz, All Boys Aren't Blue, and The Fault in Our Stars. So that's one option. You can make your copy free from the blog post. The Alexandria Public Library has another great free poster set that I super love and wanted to share. Um, they created wanted posters for all of these different books that are that have been banned or challenged. And so it it shows like an image from the book. There's a big wanted label at the top, and then it says like wanted the hunger games for insensitivity anti-family themes and violence wanted the giver for dark and complex themes considered beyond the intended age group considered dangerous do not read these posters are um, really just fun ways to start a conversation they also point out kind of the absurdity of of some of the challenges that have taken place throughout history um I, I think that they're a pretty great resource. And I was also impressed when I was looking around the Alexandria Public Library site after I found these at all of the great library posters available there. So grab the wanted posters and then check out their site for more ideas too. The National Education of Association... The National Education Association has a great freedom to read poster. This one is a lot more subtle if you're in a situation where it's a little bit difficult for you to refer to Banned Books Week. This is just a nice poster. It says freedom to read and it has books with flowers growing out of them. It's extremely non-political, um, so I, I appreciate that as an option. And then again, those infographics I mentioned from the American Library Association would be great to print out. It just shares the facts. It shows the top 13 most challenged books of 2022 on one page. And then on the other page, it says censorship by the numbers. And it shows like who's making the challenges. Where do the challenges take place? What's challenged besides books? How has censorship of books changed over um, recent history. And so students can just kind of learn what's going on. What, what do we think about this? Next, I want to share just a couple of quick ideas for activities this week. I know you probably already have lots going on. So these are just quick things that maybe you could, you could add in for five or 10 minutes, one or two days or all five days, if you could manage it. Uh, the New York Times has a nice collection of possibilities, and on one of the pages, I found a lot of helpful writing prompts. So I'm going to link those in. They're just, you know, they're they're pretty quick, and they give students a chance to think, like, how does this affect me? Have I ever read a book that's been challenged? How did that book impact me? What do I think about people making these decisions for me? It's just like a whole bunch of different questions that can get them thinking. Um, you can have students write about these questions. You can have them talk with partners or small groups. So that's one idea. Another idea would be to have students just do some research into it. Maybe you want to have them create a poster about one book that's been banned for your wall and um, they don't have to take a side one way or the other. They can just explain like why was it banned? How, how did the challenge take place? What was it banned for? Um, 
you know, and then if you want to add more information, you can you can kind of show how it's part of a trend or um, how the the ban was eventually overturned or I don't know. You can make it make it more if you want to make it more. Another way to make it more would be to have students create like a timeline type of infographic that goes way back to when the first book was challenged in the U.S. So they could start their infographic with a case study of sort of that first challenge and then go through history. And maybe you want to suggest they feature five books in different eras and and how those books were challenged and what happened or 10 books or um, whatever you want, really. <laughs> this could be a week-long project, but it could also be like a 45-minute little quick research thing where you just you dip your toes into this history and you let students start to marinate on it. A bit bigger project would be entering into the teen writing contest at the New York Library. They are having a contest called Freedom to Read, and it's already open for submissions, and it's open until Friday, December 22nd. So you could start this week. You could be working on it for the next couple of months. Um, Students have a chance to write about why the Freedom to Read is important to them. Um, you can either make this an optional thing. You can, you can hang a poster about it in your room and let students enter who want to enter, or maybe you could consider having it be, um, a project in class, depending on the climate at your school. Okay. Last but not least, a quick thing that you can do in class would be to take five or 10 minutes on any days that you could to feature a book or author that has been challenged through some kind of short reading or video. Think about when we talk on here about about Book Trailer Tuesday or First Chapter Friday. You just, you kind of say like, hey, here's this book. Um, it's been challenged. This is why. And then you show like a little short interview with the author or a spot like video about sort of what the book is about or a trailer. I've linked some up in the blog post. I've got one for Fahrenheit 4. Four, five, one, one for the hate you give, one for new kid, and one for gender queer, which is currently the number one most challenged and banned book in the U.S. Okay, my friends, that's a wrap. I just wanted to come on and say it's banned books week. It's really important. There's so much happening in our world in terms of intellectual freedom and challenges to books and harassment of librarians, and so. This is a good year to make a nod to Ban Books Week. Even if all you can do is print some free posters and put them on your door, you're doing something. You're encouraging students to think about this and think about sort of what it does mean to them to be able to go to the library and pick out the books that they want. Um, So obviously you have to judge what's happening in your classroom, in your community, your, your laws that you're dealing with in your classroom. But if it's possible for you to recognize banned books this week, I hope you've found some helpful ideas in this podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about banned books week and different ways that you can get students thinking about the freedom to read in your classroom. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative. (music) 